Hello and welcome to episode 7 of Learn English with Photos. My name is Geoffrey Hill and in the first part of this lesson I'm going to be talking about some photos I took during a day trip to Glasgow. Then we'll study some of the vocabulary in more detail. And finally I'll ask you some questions about your own travel experiences. Let's start with a bit of background information. Glasgow is the largest city in Scotland with a population of almost 600,000. However, it's not the capital city of Scotland, that's Edinburgh. The city is situated on the River Clyde, in the country's west-central lowlands. Glasgow grew from a small rural settlement on the River Clyde to become one of the largest seaports in Britain. With the Industrial Revolution, the city and surrounding region became one of the world's leading centres for the shipbuilding industry, producing many innovative and famous vessels. Today it is one of Europe's top ten financial centres, and is home to many of Scotland's leading businesses. Glasgow is known throughout the world for its two football teams, Celtic and Rangers, while famous Glaswegians include Sir Alex Ferguson, the manager of Manchester United, John Logie Baird, the inventor of television, and Gordon Brown, the former Prime Minister of the United Kingdom. In May 2012, or 2012 if you prefer, I spent a day in Glasgow with my daughter, who was studying in Scotland at the time. We caught the 8.30 bus from Paisley, where she was living, and arrived in Glasgow just after nine. We decided to begin our tour by visiting Glasgow's famous university, which is located in the west end of the city. The University of Glasgow is the fourth oldest university in the English-speaking world. It was founded in 1451 and is presently one of the 19 British higher education institutions ranked amongst the top 100 of the world. As you can see, the buildings are very impressive, but unfortunately we could only admire them from the outside, as there were no guided tours on the day we were there, which was disappointing. Just down the road from the university is the Kelvin Grove Art Gallery and Museum, one of Scotland's most popular free attractions. It has 22 themed, state-of-the-art galleries displaying an astonishing 8,000 objects. We had coffee in the massive centre hall before starting our visit. Among the most intriguing exhibits were an authentic World War II Spitfire and this collection of floating heads. There's also a gallery featuring the work of Scotland's most famous designer, Charles Rennie Mackintosh. And I thought this sign was quite funny. We could have spent much longer in the museum, but it was time for lunch, so we headed back up the hill to Ashton Lane, a cobbled back street full of bars and restaurants which is popular with students. We had lunch in Mimo's Bistro, which was cheap and cheerful. Our next stop was the nearby Botanic Gardens. By now there were black clouds overhead, and it was beginning to rain, so we were glad to be able to shelter in this enormous glass house. We had considered walking the couple of miles to the centre of Glasgow, but with all that rain about, we decided to take the underground instead. The Glasgow subway opened in 1896, and is the third oldest underground metro system in the world, after the London Underground and the Budapest Metro. We spent a very pleasant afternoon wandering round the shops and sightseeing. The Prince's Square shopping centre on Buchanan Street occupies a pre-existing cobbled square dating from 1841, which was reconfigured by enclosing the entire space below a new clear glass domed and vaulted roof. Glasgow features many examples of Victorian civic architecture. The city chambers in George Square were inaugurated by Queen Victoria herself in 1888. The big wheel is not Victorian, by the way. The statue is of Sir Walter Scott, the famous 19th century Scottish author, who wrote a number of classic historical novels such as Ivanhoe and Rob Roy. Unfortunately, seagulls are no respecters of reputation. Nor are the late-night revellers who keep putting a traffic cone on the statue of the Duke of Wellington outside Glasgow's Gallery of Modern Art a tradition which started in the 1980s. And while we're on the subject of statues, here's one of Mercury. No, not Freddy. Merchant Square was originally built in the 1800s as part of Glasgow's fruit market, but is now home to a host of bars, cafes and restaurants. Glasgow Cross is one of the city's most historic sites, though most of its present buildings are relatively modern. Five important streets meet here, making this a busy and very important junction. Glasgow Cross encompasses the Tollbooth Clock Tower, all that remains of the original city chambers, which were destroyed by fire in 1926. 
We could have spent a lot longer exploring Glasgow's historical and cultural heritage, but by now our feet were starting to ache and it was time to catch the bus back to Paisley. All in all, we had a great day out, and if you ever get the chance, be sure to spend some time in Glasgow. OK, let's now go over some of the vocabulary you've heard in the first part of the lesson. I'll say each word twice, and you can repeat it after me if you like. I'll also make a few comments along the way. The first word is architecture. Architecture. Architecture is the art of planning, designing and constructing buildings. Art gallery. Art gallery. An art gallery is a building where paintings are shown to the public. Author. Author. An author is a person whose job is writing books. For example, J.K. Rowling is the author of the Harry Potter series. Backstreet. Backstreet. A backstreet in a town or city is a small, narrow street with very little traffic. You may have heard of the pop group The Backstreet Boys. Cobbled. Cobbled. A cobbled street has a surface made of cobblestones, which are stones with a rounded upper surface. Exhibit. Exhibit. An exhibit is a work of art that is displayed to the public in a museum or art gallery. Glass house. Glass house. A glass house is a large structure made of glass which is used for growing food, flowers or vegetables. Junction. Junction. A junction is a place where roads join. Lowlands. Lowlands. Lowlands are an area of low flat land. Scotland is divided into the lowlands in the south and the highlands in the north. Mile. Mile. A mile is a unit of distance used in Britain and America. A mile is equivalent approximately to 1.6 kilometres. Museum. Museum. A museum is a building where interesting and valuable objects are kept and displayed to the public. If you're in London, be sure to visit the British Museum. Novel. Novel. A novel is a long written story about imaginary people and events. The Da Vinci Code by Dan Brown was a very popular novel a few years ago. Seagull. Seagull. A seagull is a large, common, grey or white bird that lives near the sea and can be very annoying. Shipbuilding. Shipbuilding. Shipbuilding is the industry of building ships. Statue. Statue. A statue is a large sculpture of a person or animal made of stone or metal. And one of the most famous statues in the world is the Statue of Liberty in New York. Underground. Underground. An underground is a railway system built under the ground. For example, the London Underground. In America, they tend to use the word subway, for instance, the New York subway. And in Paris, they have the metro, of course. University. University. A university is a high-level educational institution where you study for a degree. The one in the picture is Oxford, one of the most famous universities in the world. Victorian. Victorian. The word Victorian is used to describe anything relating to the period from 1837 to 1901, when Victoria was Queen of England. Right, that's enough vocabulary for now. In the final part of the lesson, you'll get the chance to do some speaking. I'm going to ask you a series of questions relating to the topics we've covered in this lesson. I suggest you pause the video to give yourself time to answer. And don't just answer yes or no, try to make your answers as detailed as possible. Right, here goes. Question 1. What would you do if you had a day to spend in a big city like Glasgow? Question 2. Which major cities have you visited in foreign countries? Question 3. Have you ever been to Scotland? Would you like to go? Question 4. Do you enjoy going to museums and art galleries? 
Question 5. What was the last museum or art gallery you visited? What did you think of it? Question 6. Which major city would you most like to visit and why? Question 7. What was the last major city you visited? What did you see and do there? Question 8. How would you prepare for a visit to a big city? Question 9. What's your favourite big city and why? Question 10. Would you like to live in a big city? Right, that's the end of this lesson. I hope you found it useful. If so, look out for the next episode of Learn English with Photos.